Well, thank you. And um, do you think a totalitarian system will fall down eventually? Uh, well, we know from the history of philosophy that every democratic society faces the problem of tyrants. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is not a new problem. Book eight of Plato's Republic, he says, democracy will lead immediately to tyranny because some leader will come, they'll, say, they'll, they'll, they'll spread conspiracy theories about people who are trying to overthrow the country and they'll, say, and they'll say that they're the strong leader and they're gonna protect you. Then they'll seize power and seize all the money that they can and the power and they'll hand some out to their supporters to, sh to, sh to, to show their supporters that they're really on their side. And then they'll never give power up. And this is the oldest problem in political philosophy. It dates back to book eight of Plato's Republic. And Plato says, you know, the problem of democracy will always be the problem of tyrants. And tyrants, and, and there's a, just a, Plato just lays out how tyrants work. Tyrants spread fear. Uh, 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 they, they say people are out to get you and they represent themselves as protecting you. So I think it's wrong to think that, you know, to hope that, this will, that the problem of, tyr of tyranny will go away. The problem of tyranny is the problem of democracy. Our democracies are always at risk of being taken over by tyrants who spread fear and who seek ultimate power. And that will always be with us. It's part of human nature to be afraid. It's part of human nature to, to feel that, you know, if you're the dominant group, it's part of human nature to feel that you should be the dominant group. And so, and tyrants will always appeal to that. So since this problem is as old as dates back to the beginning of political philosophy itself, I don't think we can think that one day it will be over. I think we just have to think, this is what it means to live in a democratic society where people can vote and people are susceptible to fear and, 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 uh, and people are easily flattered. They're easily praised. Uh, so you tell them, no, you should be the center of the country. You know, in America, Donald Trump essentially tells white Christians, you should be the center of attention. And they're like, yes, you're right. Whenever I see a black person on television, it takes away from me. And they're trying to take away from my centrality. So I think this, there's a playbook as to how tyrants work. And humans are susceptible to this. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I, I think that, I mean, I think that if we lived in diverse societies where people felt that their needs were taken care of by, their gov by the government, uh, and they felt that people different from them were their fellow citizens and shared this society with them and respected them, even though they were different, then tyrants wouldn't be able to spread fear so easily. But <laughs> when will that, you know, <laughs> one day we will all live in utopia, hopefully. But until then, you know, I think what we've learned is that, you know, you can never feel safe in a democracy. Uh, Plato warned us of this in Book Eight of the Republic. A democracy is always always vulnerable, uh, and always will be. And so I think maybe going forward, if we could all those of us who all live in democratic societies can just realize that democracy is something you have to work on all the time, that will be a protection. Who, who? So to talking about uh, the minority groups and you know the fear that are, that is spread by tyrants um can we talk about some like uh, some news that are going right now that that are just in of course. Um, um increasing of racism about recent circumstance in the usa is connecting with politically incorrect expressions according to this how should politicians in the future speak in order to in order to clean up detestation? Good. So when for a long time, I, I'm not. I don't think that the United States there's been an increase in racism. The United States has always had a tremendous amount of racism, but what we've had lately is we've had a president who openly uses 
hate speech, racist vocabulary. So, and, and I think when we analyze what's going on, we have to understand, it's, it's not that he, he increased racism, it's that by using openly racist vocabulary, by not speaking in a civil way, he attracted support. He got people to vote for him. Um, and I think, I think it's, it's complicated, especially to non-Americans, to explain how that worked. I think it, it worked like this. Everyone was being racist in the way they talked. They were just not being openly racist. They were just being racist. They were hinting at it. They were hinting at racism. When Bill Clinton in the 1990s, the president, U.S. president in the 1990s said, we're ending welfare as we know it. That was covert racist talk. That was, that was racist, even though it wasn't because the word welfare gets connected in white Americans' minds with black people. It was a so-called, it was, it was a code word, what we call a code word, sometimes called a dog whistle. What Trump did is he was openly racist. He said, uh, Mexicans, you know, Mexicans are coming here, they're rapists. Well, that's not a code word. That's very open. You know, we've been calling Muslims terrorists. It's very dangerous if, if you have, political leaders calling people terrorists, calling ethnic groups terrorists. I don't know if you're familiar with that in Turkey, but in um, the United States, we have actual politicians who call whole, whole ethnic groups terrorists. They'll say things like, Muslims are terrorists. Well, you know, Muslims are an entire group of people. <laughs> you know? uh, so, so when you do that, that's extremely dangerous. You know, when, when you're saying, and then they say, oh, no, I just meant some of them are. Well, some of everyone is a terrorist. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's you know, when you have politicians calling ethnic groups terrorists or criminals, you know, in, in America, like Mexicans are rapists, or there's always this, folk, there's always this thing where you connect, there's this move that tyrants make, that demagogues make, when they connect an ethnic group, like black people, or a racial group, black people, Muslims, uh, they say black people are criminals, Muslims are terrorists. That kind of talk is extremely dangerous. Uh, it, 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 it links the, eth even though the politician will then say, I just meant some, right? That's typical. I didn't mean all Muslims are terrorists. I just meant some Muslims are terrorists. I didn't mean all black people were criminal. I just meant some black people were criminal. It's still, uh, it's the function of that talk is to link um, groups with terrible acts. And when you link groups with terrible acts, you allow anything to be done to them. Then people will look away when things are done to them. And so, so we had in the, so we had in the United States, we have a long history of politicians talking about black people, black American citizens as thugs, uh, criminals. Um, we have a history, since, at least since 9-11, of talking about our Muslim citizens as terrorists. And this kind of talk has a, a dramatic effect on people's view of whole groups. It, it, it causes them to think of them as less than human. And it allows the government to do things to that group, members of that group, that they should not be able to do. So what I would prefer is that we never allow politicians to speak that way, <laughs> to say things like black people are criminals or Jewish people are greedy or, uh, you know, uh, or Muslims are terrorists. Uh, it, it, it allows people to think because criminal, terrorist, do you want, are those people really citizens of yours? Are they fellow citizens and fellow humans? No, that kind of talk suggests that they should be placed somewhere in prison or something. And so, and it always, and that kind of talk always precedes mass violence or state violence against members of that group. Um, but I think unfortunately, when, since so many people were trafficking in in racist talk, but it was co with code words, like we're gonna end welfare. Uh, 
when when Donald Trump came and he just and he said uh, and he said the things he did, Mexicans are rapists. If people are like, oh, he's really honest and authentic. He's a real authentic politician who is speaking his mind, and so so that attracted people to him. So, um, but I hope I hope at some point we're going to have a return to uh, we're going to have to a return to uh, to a way of speaking where people will where citizens of democratic societies will be very opposed when they will be turned off when the, when po politicians say you know muslims are terrorists or other kinds of hate speech um professor is it it would be possible to create world without uh, racism for example even while we were introducing ourselves we as explain ourselves with the social identification uh, with our ethnicity and uh, i don't know uh, with our uh, social group so it it would be possible to create work without uh, racism or something like that uh, <laughs> uh, uh, i think the problem is the problem is tyranny i, I mean i think there are many problems but one problem is any anyone who wants to be a tyrant need mm -hmm. is going to use racism or something like it or homophobia uh hatred of gay people or uh or some method to suggest that a minority group is threatening the majority and the majority needs a strong leader to take control and protect them so that is just that's how tyranny works that's how a tyrant works so as long as you have people who want to be tyrants, they're going to try to create some, to focus on a minority group and then create fear about that minority group and represent themselves as the protector of the majority group. So, so uh, you know, and so that's one problem. One problem is tyranny. It's not clear how to be a tyrant unless you have racism. I mean, maybe you can, there's racism, there's uh, religious discrimination, which, you know, like in the United States against Muslims, which is a very serious problem um, in Israel, like, uh, in, in, uh, in, in every country has, has uh, in India against Muslims. Uh, so, uh, so, so uh, obviously anti-Semitism is, is Europe's old problem. Uh, so, uh, so I wouldn't say, so, so we have, we, what we have is we have the problem of minority groups, of caste, say. Um, I mean, in India, the, the attacks on, on Muslims are not really, I mean, they're not really racism because they're attacks on, on Indians of the same ethnic group who are just of a different religion. So I think, um, I mean, I think race is, uh, so let's take two points. Let's take racism, which is, a particular kind of, of ranking of hierarchy by race. So, you know, uh, uh, Europeans feeling superior to Africans because of they colonized Africa. And because they colonized Africa and had the slave trade and exploited Africa, they want to pretend that Africa didn't have a great civilization well before Europe and, you know, they want to erase this history. So the problem of race, of white and black, of Europe and Africa, of Europe and Asia, um, that's one problem. And uh, another problem is just the general problem of uh, major dominant groups in a society and minority groups in that society. So those are two different pro interrelated problems. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I'm Jewish, but, you know, a Palestinian is someone who looks very similar to me, <laughs> you know, Palestinians and, and, is, and Jewish, there were a group of people living in a place a couple thousand years ago, and we all look similar. And, uh, you know, uh, so often these majority minority tensions are between groups that have occupied the same location and look, I can't tell if someone is 
a Turkish person is Kurdish or not. I mean, they all, they, you know, <laughs> you know, that's not a race problem. That's a, you know, there have been Kurdish and non-Kurdish people in the Ottoman Empire and before that Byzantium for a very long time. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Saladin was Kurdish. Uh, the, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that problem of majority and minority groups, I think, will might always be with society. It's something to do with how we are as societies. Um, the problem of the racial divide of black versus white, I, I think that's a more recent thing. It comes from the European colonization of Africa. And, uh, and it's a particular instance of the more general problem. Um, in in uh, so, uh, social dominance theory, Felicia Prado and Jim Sidanius's theory of social psychology, they say that all societies need an outgroup. Every society needs a minority group that that it attacks as the criminals, and and I hope that's not true, but uh, but um, it certainly is this structure that we see political philosophy talking about all the time. And as long as we have tyrants, we ha will have people saying that there's a minority group that is a threat and we need to protect ourselves from them. 